Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Senior Style Guide Real Talk podcast. We are getting up there in episode numbers. I'm your host, Sean Brown, once again. I know you guys are probably getting tired of hearing my voice, but we have a new voice on the show today, and that is going to be Trevor Ray, who is a senior photographer out of the Austin, Texas area. Trevor's been working with seniors for about the last six years, and you've probably seen some of his work. He's just super incredible. Um, when it comes to kind of almost like a more editorial look for his senior work. Um, Amazing off-camera flash and lighting work that he does. So if you guys have not had a chance to check out his work, make sure you go do that on Instagram or um, the interwebs and all that stuff. But we're excited to have him on here. Um, Trevor's been shooting seniors, like I said, for since 2013, based in Austin, Texas. So we're going to kind of dive into how he got into senior photography and how um, he's kind of grown with the industry as well to create a a unique image that's uh, really identifiable with his brand. So welcome to Real Talk, Trevor. Well, thanks, Sean. I'm really happy to be here. Um, So tell us a little bit about your uh, photography, how you fell into it, how you got started. Uh, Basically, you just kind of your your starting story. Yeah, sure. Uh, So uh, I'll try to streamline it a little bit. Uh, But I I started doing... uh, out of college graphic design. I've always kind of been in the arts. Uh, that morphed into computer design and kind of morphed into computer programming. And uh, then I started doing it um, independently, so I kind of ran my own company. I uh, moved to LA, and there I started really getting into photography. I was there for about three years and networked and became a still photographer uh, for some indie films. And so that was fun. It kind of let me play a little bit, but I also got paid for it. and. Uh, just had a cool experience. I got to be up on IMDb and just, it was fun. Um, and then you know I you're a pro when you have an IMDb page about you, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I moved to Austin. Uh, I was born and raised in Texas, but after I graduated, I joined the military, moved around. Uh, so came back to Texas, uh, been in Austin uh, for a few years now. Um, and then I decided to get like, get more serious and get my PPA certification. So uh, in January, 2013, I went to imaging to do that. And then there, I saw, um, attended these senior workshops and like, oh wow, that's pretty cool. I want to do that. And it really inspired me. And I got home and a month later I started my model team of just one person. And then I reached out to my, uh, friends who had some, uh, kids in college and shot their senior photos. Um, and then the next year I got, had a bigger model team, uh, and just kind of kept, kept it growing from there, uh, kind of starting from nowhere as far as uh, senior context and just try figuring out the social media game and uh, figuring out how to reach out doing contests and just kind of building it up from there. Awesome. Uh, So you said you had a graphic design background. Did that kind of help in that transition from one genre of kind of the creative world to another? I think it's the eye. Like you, 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 you gotta have that. You gotta be able to see, um, in graphic design and in photography, if something looks right. I mean, and you just, you know, you just have to, you can look at it and say, no, that's not right. And some people can't do that. They can see something that's horribly graphic design logo and they wouldn't know that it was horrible. But uh, it takes, you know, certain people that just have that interest um, in art to, to do that. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. yeah. So um, you, you mentioned you go to imaging it, you see the senior kind of track speakers over there and you're just like, I love this. Um, what was kind of that, that pull or what did you love about senior photography that you kind of were like, I, I'm just going to do this full time. Yeah. I, I like, I like the art of it. I like the, the fact that out of all the other genres of photography, I feel like we can be more artistic in our, our expression, but also um, I've always been drawn to um, just the culture of the youth and, to it's high school is tough and uh it, it it was for me it was for it was for lots of people and if i could do something in my art to uh, contribute to help someone have a better self-esteem of themselves and if i can use my photography um to say hey look this is you you could look pretty cool here and uh then i want to do that and that's kind of, that was one of the big things is just uh kind of being involved in that way and allowing um, high schoolers to see themselves in a different light and, and feel like um, that, hey, I, I, this is, I can be, look this, I, just a positive uh, self-esteem uh, through their photography. And I'm not saying that, you know, image is everything, but it's nice when you can create a piece of artwork that 
um, has a positive influence on high schoolers and makes their high school life just a little bit better, maybe just a tiny bit. Yeah, I love that. And and what kind of inspired you to do that? Because, you know, I think so many of us photographers, we forget kind of the impact that we can have on these individuals where it's like, I, I mean, I've, I'm sure you've worked with individuals where they walk out of their session and they're like, I've never felt so confident in my life. I've never felt like this before. Um, I've had parents say, thank you for, you know, empowering my, my daughter and giving her kind of that self-confidence and self, self-esteem boost. So what inspired you to kind of make that a core pillar of your brand? Wow. Um, Probably it would start with my high school experience. Um, I was a complete nerd and geek, socially awkward. Uh, And so I I think that kind of molded me going forward to have a heart for people that might be in the same situation. Um, And I also uh, spent some time doing uh, some short-term mission work uh, with my church. And so leading teams and that kind of fell into it a little bit because I got involved with youth a little bit doing that. Uh, And just, I, I don't know. I can't explain why or how I have, I'm drawn to help the younger culture feel um, like they belong uh, because I think that's a big thing. Uh, but I think it's important that they do feel that way uh, growing up. There's uh, and if I can help in any way in that, I'm grateful to do it. Yeah. So um, you basically you graduate college with graphic design, correct? Yeah. And then go into the military, go back into graphic yeah. design. It was kind of other way around, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then you come back and, and you're kind of going into photography full time where you're not having a stable income anymore. You're kind of having to grind and work for it a little bit. Um, talk about kind of that transition where it's, you know, well, you're going from a paycheck to something that you have to work a little bit for. Like, did you struggle or what, uh, what kind of happened in that period? Uh, sure. Actually it's, um, I am in a unique position where, uh, I can selectively just pick seniors as what I do. I don't really want to do any other type of uh, photography. Um, But I also still have some time left to do some of that um, independent consulting uh, graphic and web work. Um, And so I still do it. And I still shoot seniors. And uh, it allows me to kind of not be stressed about it. So it's nice. Um, Yeah. That's super convenient too, especially, you know, kind of having that. I think so many people also think that, you know, you maybe need to go full time. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people also neglect kind of that, that side gig where it's like, if you're working the, the jobs that kind of are what you still love. And, um, you know, if you're a high school counselor and you're loving working with the kids and stuff like that from your nine to five, and then you do photography as a side, I think a lot of people um, kind of, you know, say that you have to go full time to be considered quote unquote professional. So, um, is that something that you kind of play to your brand? Do you say that you're a full time photographer or kind of how did you work to brand yourself if you're doing also kind of other stuff on the side? Uh, it's not really part of the equation in my branding. Um, I, I always dabble in lots of stuff. Uh, I think that's what I'll always do. I can never be content with just doing one thing. Uh, and I do three printing. I, I do, uh, beer making, um, all kinds of stuff uh, that I always want to have a finger in one thing or another. And so with my bending with photography, it's, it's almost like it's full two full-time jobs in some sense. Um, and sometimes one is more than the other uh, as far as what gets more attention. Uh, but as far as for branding, I don't, it's not really part of the equation. I don't feel like it needs to be. Um, I'm a photographer, whether it's this amount of time, that amount of time, I'm still providing the same service and uh, still doing the same thing. Yeah. I love it. So did you say beer making? Yeah. All right. Tell us a little bit about that. Cause I think there are a lot of photographers listening where they're like, how do you <laughs> brew your own beer? Uh, I've been doing that probably for about five years. Um, it's beer is just uh, water, uh, grains, hops. Um, and that's it. And you, um, I mean, if you boil the water, you pour the you grains in, you let the grains sit for an hour and then you pour it into another pot and then you mix in the hops and then you let it sit for about a month and then you put in um, some carbonation and you have beer. I mean, it's, that's like way, way simplified, but uh, I love experimenting with that, making different recipes. Uh, and I have a kegerator uh, outside where I can put six taps of beers. Uh, so yeah, I do that when I have time lately. It's not been so much, but uh, I also, 
I'm a single parent uh, of two small boys. Uh, I have them 50% of the time. So um, free time is, is not much that I have, um, but yeah. I keep myself busy. That's awesome. Um, I was talking on another podcast. If you guys were listening to the Ultra, it was like episode 23 or so. Um, Danny Diamond does woodworking. Um, and he says that one of the things about having a, a something that you can do that's non-photography related kind of opens up your mind creativity, uh, your your mind creatively and allows you to explore kind of those other avenues that you might have completely missed had you just immerse yourself completely in editing or, or how to shoot this image better or anything like that. What have you seen kind of having those outside hobbies and how has it influenced your creativity as a photographer? I, I agree with that 100%. I, I don't, I think it's unhealthy to do one thing, whether it's photography or anything, 100% of the time. Uh, I think you need that space to do other things, to let your brain work in other ways. And like with when I'm making beer, it's it's kind of a five hour or six hour process for the day. It's very zen-like. You can just kind of compartmentalize and then just do that. And then it can allow your brain just to kind of rest and not think about those things and have things come to you. I also uh, try to listen to different podcasts um, about creativity. And uh, I think just allowing moments in life to be still and to put your brain in a different direction is, is absolute. You, you just, you have to have that to recharge and you can't just spend 24 hours a day doing photography and editing and you're, you're going to, you, it'll hurt your craft and yeah. you need to protect your craft and you need to do what you can to always be better with your craft. And I think part of that is stepping away for a few hours um, and doing something else and letting your brain just do something else. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Um, kind of diving into, you know, I think every photographer struggles with this. Um, and that's, it's kind of, how did you know that you wanted to be a photographer? Because um, I think, you know, there is a stigma, I think, where people are like, oh, photography isn't a real job. So did you ever feel that? And kind of how did you make that push forward? Where you're like, no, this is what I love. This is what I'm going to do. Yeah, uh, for sure. Uh, I grew up in an artist kind of household. Um, I always have had um, an artistic leaning uh as far as as soon as the first digital camera came out um like in 2000 1999 um i got one uh and started playing around with it and have been doing that since with different versions and then like i said when i moved to la i got really serious about it uh yeah i could totally see how some people there is that perception out there in the in the real corporate world that for, but I don't care. I mean, I like to do it. Um, I make money doing it and I like creating art. Um, and so I, I don't care if other people think that photography is not real or that it is what it is. It's, I love doing it. And I, uh, I love, I've always will want to do something, uh, where I can create. Uh, I always want to be creating. And right now, uh, for the unforeseeable future, uh, photography is the main thing I'm using as an outlet to do that. Uh, and as long as it brings me fulfillment and it pay, helps pay the bills, um, I'll keep doing it. I love it. Um, tell us about a time that you made a mistake and, and what did you learn from it? Oh gosh, Sean. Um, I think, uh, not being, you have to be prepared. Uh, and as uh, I can't think of, there were, when I first started out, um, I think there was one time where I, I didn't bring the memory card. So we went through all this preparation. I showed up, they showed up and uh, I didn't have the memory card. There wasn't time to go back. Uh, and so we had to reschedule the shoot. And so from that point on, there's always a checklist of everything you need for a shoot before you get to the shoot. And uh, just, and always bring extra, bring another memory card, bring another battery, bring another light, always plan that something is going to go wrong. Uh, something will break and, and have a plan if it if it does. Yeah. Well, and, and I think that the checklist is a good idea too. And, and knowing what you need to do, it's like, I remember it was uh, last year and I'm shooting a session and all of a sudden my 70 to 200 won't focus. And I'm like, crap, I, I had issues with screws being tight. And I think even having that checklist in place where it's like I had backup lenses, but it wasn't happening. Right. Just having that checklist in place where you can look at it. Cause when you're in a frenzy, you're like, 
you don't think about things through. And it literally was just a button, uh, the, the focusing thing that I needed to switch to say, focus from 1.2 meters to infinity versus right. 2.5. And so it's like having that checklist in place gives you that kind of that itemized um, list that you can go back and say, okay, here's what I need. Here's what I have, all of that stuff. Bef- because, you know, as photographers, we have 200 different things going on. And so yeah. having those things in place to make sure that you're double checking yourself, I think is a fantastic idea. Yeah. And, and also like when that happens on set, just never let them see you sweat, you know, fake yeah. it. like, hold on, I'm focusing a minute and, you know, just work, you fake your way through it and make the best of it. <laughs> exactly. Um, what's the time that you remember struggling in your business and how did you work to overcome that? Whether that be an obstacle or a mishap? Uh, you know, I think that's an ongoing thing. Uh, as far as str- I think the biggest thing I struggle with is, am I any good? You know, you, you, you sometimes get into the game where you compare yourself with other people and sometimes you think, oh man, my work is crap, you know, and you, you just struggle with uh, why am I doing this? And uh, I think it, that goes through a cycle lots of times, but I think just continually knowing that uh, you, you're doing it because it's something that inspires you, that something that motivates you, something that you, it's, it's something you have to do kind of as an artist. And um, I think as far as getting around it is just having that faith in yourself uh, that, you, what you're doing does matter and that uh, it, that when you recognize self-doubt, just realize that that's a normal part of the process, that that's something we all go through and uh, you can have friends out there that will help you through it and uh, you'll move on. I don't, I don't know if that yeah. seems kind of simplistic, but uh, just knowing that uh, it's normal, I think really uh, helps to get through it, that this is just a normal part of the process of being an artist that we go through self doubt. Um, that's, that's okay. That's part of it. And I think if we didn't have that, it, we would, it would, there wouldn't be that high and that low. And I I think that's part of it. It's, you can't have it without it. Um, and it's okay. So let's talk about that a little bit, because I think that there are some photographers where, um, they don't, they don't want to struggle. They want to make sure that all their work that they're putting out there is perfect in in every way and and they don't they they say well i'm struggling right now i don't want to i don't want to struggle you know in in six months from now or whatever what can i do to make my work better what do you say to those photographers that just want everything to be perfect without like you said having kind of those highs and those lows Uh, well well, i want everything to be perfect too i want all my images to be perfect Uh, but i think i think it's an unrealistic expectation to think that you're not going to go through that Um, i'm not saying that the work will suffer necessarily, but as far as your mental state and emotional state, I think just in the nature of what we do, um, as far as being creatives, uh, it just kind of, I feel for most, it kind of comes with the territory of constantly questioning. And I think it's also, um, it's a bigger picture of constantly wanting to do better. And in the, by definition of doing better means that it's, you have to do better than what you're doing right now. If we ever get into a situation where I don't need to do better, meaning I, my, all my stuff is great, it doesn't need to be better, then I, I think you're cutting yourself short. And so I think sometimes when you go through those cycles of self-doubt, it helps push you uh, to make your work better. It pushes you to be better and to produce better. Uh, and so for those, like if you say that there are people out there who are saying that they don't want to go through that, um, um, I, I think it's part of making you a better person. And I think that's for photography. And I also think it's just for life in general. Uh, we need to be okay with the down parts because that elevates us to be better people. Um, and I think if we didn't have those down parts, I think maybe we would kind of become megalomaniacs. I mean, we <laughs> need that to keep ourselves in check. Well, I think I forget who said it, but somebody puts it really... In, in a great way where if you don't have those lows, you don't know exactly, you don't know how high those highs are. I think it actually might've been Spanky Mills who right yeah. in her area. But she says, it was like, you know, if you don't have those low lows, you're not going to know how great those highest highs are. Right. Um, and I think that's something really good to keep into perspective because all of a sudden, you know, you're, you, you might be having a really rough day with a client, your shoot didn't go well, 
just all these things are piling on top of you. And then, you know, four weeks from now, you're experiencing like just pure elation from having the, the greatest session of your life, the best order that you've ever had. And without those lows, if everything's just kind of, you know, plateaus or, or stays the same, I, well, I think, I think like you said, it just drive it will drive you crazy. So I think that having that in perspective is not a bad thing to do at all. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, so you kind of talked about self doubt a little bit. Let's talk about comparison and if you've ever kind of fell into that comparison trap. Oh, for, yes. Um, I, but I think there's a positive thing to that too. Like, I think like one of the things that helped me grow is uh, like I would look at certain photographers and say, I don't think I could do that, but I want to do that. Uh, and so I would reach out to them um, at one point with lighting. Um, Patrick McBride of Pat and Cassie, I said, I really like what you're doing. Um, can you help me? And so I flew up there and I got a one-on-one uh, session with him and it helped me with my skill set with off-camera flash. Um, and then uh, I really started just admiring and loving Nikki Hufford's work and mm-hmm. just like, I love what you're doing. I love that shot. How do I do that? And then I end up uh, flying out to her and getting a, a workshop with her. And I think that you can spin it. You can spin the comparison trap and, and instead of using it as a negative, use it as a positive to uh, take bits and pieces of things that you love about what people are doing, learn how to do it and kind of morph it into what you want to do and make, put your own spin on it. And constantly, again, it goes back to let's, let's always push ourselves to be better, create better, improve your craft and uh, don't let the comparison thing spin into a negative thing where I'm no good, but make it turn it around and make it to comparison thing where it's, Hey, I well, let me figure out how to do that and then do it and add it to your skill sets and, and add it to becoming better a photographer. Oh, and I exactly, I agree with it. I call it um, kind of, like you said, kind of picking and choosing what you like for others and turning it into your own. I call that synthesizing into something that works for you because I think that a lot of photographers get caught up in the, they, they want to be exactly like this person because it's a formula, because it works. And I think that that's not realistic as artists. We're all different people. We have different visions. We have different um, business insights. Yeah. And so I think it's exactly what you said. It's you have to figure out what works for you as an individual versus trying to say, well, this person's doing this and it's working. I'm just going to go copy everything that they're doing. I don't think it's realistic in life. I don't think it's realistic in business because we each have different experiences, different perspectives that shape how we see the world. Yeah. Yeah. So um, give us a rundown. What do you kind of think is, is next for you? Whether that be, you know, kind of continue with photography down the road. If you're going to go open up your own brewery, what, what do you kind of feel like is like uh, next for you in life or, or in business? Oh, wow. Uh, continue doing the photography. I don't have any, plans of any new major expansions, uh, but continually getting better at what I do, connecting with seniors, um, playing uh, constantly, um, trying to keep up with uh, social media and uh, constantly trying to keep up with marketing, branding. Uh, I think that's about it. I I don't have any major new game plan other than just doing what I'm doing and keep doing it and keep doing it better. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be opening up a brewery anytime soon, but I can... (laughs) Enjoy the beer I make uh, at my home. <laughs> um, so you, you mentioned kind of keeping up with that social media and marketing and branding. What's been the most difficult thing that you've experienced with trying to do that where it's like, you know, all of a sudden Snapchat's out and then TikTok's out or Musical.ly is out and then becomes TikTok. And, oh, yeah, 20 different apps going on that, you know, everybody's jumping around on it. How do you adapt with that? Uh well, I kind of love that. I love the challenge of it. I love learning new apps. I'm kind of a technological person and too. And so I, I love diving into new technology and, and new social uh, media. Uh, but it's, it's, you have, you have, it's time. You have to have that time to do it and you have to have the time to research it out. Like, and like you said, um, TikTok is a thing now. I just saw a thing on Gary V put out a really cool article about TikTok and how to use it in your uh, business and, uh, but you, you, I think you, you can't settle. You have to always be on it. If you are away from that, even like if it's, you take a break for three months or six months, it's, it's a hard 
road to get back up. You, you, it, the hugest thing with social media is constantly doing it, doing it, doing it. You, it, you can't not do it because it's, it's such a huge force with uh, our clients. And I, I don't think we can be successful um, if we're not constantly just churning out that social media. Uh, does that make sense or does that answer your question? Yeah. And I, I'm, I mean, I think a lot of photographers will disagree with me on this, but I, I believe that if you're not on social media, your business will die. Yeah. Um, it's, we, ha- we have to adapt. Like you said a minute ago, adapt. we're adapting every year as photographers. Um, come up. Right. Um, and like, if we don't, then like right now, almost every camera phone out there can take amazing photos. And so we do need to adapt. We need to make our pictures stand out even more. Uh, and we need to uh, go with the times. Like we, like if you took a, a photographer, senior photographer from 15 years ago and plopped them in today and said, here, make a thriving, uh, successful business, and they only use their tools uh, from 15 years ago, they would fail uh, because we need to adapt. And uh, if any, I mean, people are welcome to disagree, but I, I think we have to have our pulse on what our clients are in to be able to be successful for sure. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of photographers, they, they get caught up in, well, I don't, I don't want to do Instagram. It's not make, it's not what makes me happy or it's, it's too much of a stressor on me, which is fine. They can be a, a, a stressor figure out. I think that there are ways to figure out those systems, whether that be hiring a social media manager or, you know, looking on, there are so many, it, the internet nowadays is amazing. I mean, you can go on Upwork and find a creative freelancer who's willing to do the work for you. And it's a fraction of the price of what you would pay a huge company or anything like that. So there are ways to do it where it's um, structured. But I think, like you said, it's that consistency um, in putting it in place. And, and really, if you're not on there in it, kind of your clientele's eyes, you're not working, you're not booking clients. And they're kind of in the back of their mind wondering, you know, why isn't Trevor shooting any seniors right now? Or why isn't he picking up his camera? So um, for photographers out there who struggle to stay consistent, what do you say to them? To stay consistent as far as posting on social media, being present with their, their audience and their followers and their network. I. Well, I think as you, like, I agree with you. I said, like, as if you don't do it, I think you, your business will, will suffer. And so figuring out if you don't have the time, um, find someone that does and, and see if you can get someone to do it for you. Uh, if you absolutely, if you say that you're struggling and you can't do it, then, I, and you can't find someone else to do it. I, I just, I'm not sure what, what to say really, because I, I feel like it's an important part of it. Being a photographer is, is, or at least mostly a senior photographer, it's, it's more than, it's so much more than taking the pictures. Uh, taking the pictures is like really that much of it. Yeah. There's so much more and you have to realize that. And if you're not willing to do all that extra stuff or find someone to do that for you, then I don't know, maybe you need to do something else because it's, I think it's really essential to having a, a successful business in photography. Yeah. When I think, I'm just going to estimate and we can see how close I actually get they're probably what 8,000, 9,000 hours in a year. Um, and now we take that and. Here, wait, hold on. Alexa, how many hours are in a year? One year equals 8,772.7 hours. 8,700. Yeah, we're close. Cool. <laughs> so close. <laughs> and you know, if I look at it, I'm probably spending maybe five, 600 of those actually photographing and working with clients. Yeah. Um, and now we look at it. It's okay. Say half your life you're sleeping. So that's like still a 10th of your life or 10th of your year, excuse me, you're working on clients, just like you said. And that nine tenths, you're going to be working on marketing. You're going to be working on branding. You're going to be learning how to improve your skill set. You're going to be networking um, figuring out how to to take your client experience to the next level. So it's like, I think sometimes people get so caught up in just the images that they're taking and they neglect everything that's kind of, you know, the other 90% of what we do as photographers. Yeah. I, yeah. And if you're not doing all that other stuff, 
and you're saying, I don't know what to do, it's because you're not doing all the other stuff. Uh, you can have amazing images, um, but if you're not doing all that other stuff, your, your business will not be as successful as it could be. Yeah. So um, what do you think is most important to grow as a senior photographer right now, this day and age? I think you need to, uh, as another part of it, as far as doing the marketing and doing all the other stuff is you need to uh, look at the, what is out there with Instagram and look at what, uh, what your clients are looking at and be familiar with uh, what they like and what uh, the current trends are. Um, and I'm not saying that you have to adapt your photography to whatever is trendy at the moment. Um, but I do think you have to have a pulse on what uh, is, is currently in, in vogue um, and constantly, uh, because I think that will also help you um, to be influenced in your photography as far as like inspiration. And, and I think as artists, um, I, think it's, I think you guys specifically as far as senior photography, but I just want to be more general and, and as artists in general, I think we always we need to constantly be immersing ourselves in other people's art and, and other people's culture uh, and incorporate that in ways that we feel meshes with us in a um, kind of natural way. Uh, I'm kind of rambling, I think, but I think we just need to um, constantly be aware of what's going on in our artist community. Uh, because if we don't, we'll become too self-centered and we'll come too uh, just in our in our own head. And I don't think anyone wants to do that. And it's we need to be a part of the artist community versus being just our own island. Uh, yeah. Well, I like how you say mesh because mm -hmm. I think that that's a really important keyword that I don't want people to miss. I think a lot of times people see current trends and they try and go completely with them. Without, without regarding kind of if it's, you know, part of their existing style, is it part of their brand already? Um, if they are going to completely change, how are they going to brand and transition to that? Um, and so I really like how you say mesh where it's, once again, it kind of comes down to synthesizing what works for you, figuring out what it is about that style, why it's current and trendy, and ultimately how you can kind of work to, to capture your audience's attention with that, but also stay true to yourself at the same time. Yeah. And you could also, I mean, not everyone does model teams. You could do some, something else, but a lot of like what I do with my model teams is I get to use that to play. And that's another thing is constantly have time to play with your photography as well, to experiment and to try different things. And you might, that might not make it to its, your production line to where that's what you're going to do for your clients, but it'll, it'll help you kind of sort through some things sometimes and see what works and what doesn't. And I, I think we, we need to have that play time with our photography to grow as well uh, yeah. to constantly be trying out new stuff, see what works and what doesn't for us. Oh, totally. Um, as we kind of get to the, the end of, of the episode, um, I always like to ask our, our guest kind of if they have, if they could have three kind of pieces of advice that they could tell every photographer out there, what would your three pieces of advice be? Okay. Um, I think education, you, you, you will always need education. Uh, don't think that you ever got it figured out. Um, always, always, uh, be learning something else. Uh, so that would be one, um, two, uh, I think I'll just throw in the play thing. Uh, have time to play, book that into your, your schedule of life. Uh, you need it for yourself and you need it for your clients. Uh, and, Three, uh, the social media, I think is, is huge uh, because I think it's, we, we can sometimes get so focused on just the camp, the photo taking that, and just that part of the business. Uh, you have to stay engaged in social media and you have to ha make that a part of your business. And it's a pain. It's just such a pain sometimes, but you got to do it and you've got to constantly do it. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Um, where can people connect with you on social uh, yeah, uh, any of the socials, at, uh, it's Trevor A.Y., Trevor Ray, but there's only one R. And then Snapchat is Trevor A.Y. 1. Uh, so, yeah. Perfect. Trevor awesome. Uh, if you guys are, are listening on the podcast, thank you for, for giving us your ears for the last half hour, 45. 
Um, we'd want to make sure that we can connect with you on social. So go ahead. I'm going to have Trevor ask a, a question to, to everyone. Um, and basically, I'm just going to have you guys screenshot the, the podcast that you're listening to. If you're on YouTube, t- just take a photo of your screen, tag at Senior Style Guide, at Sean Brown Productions, and then at Trevor Ray. Um, and we'll answer, uh, basically, we want to see the answer to your question. So, Trevor, what do you want to ask our viewers and listeners for today? Any question, photography, life, whatever. Okay. Um, let's say you could. Uh, step out of our space-time continuum and you had a week to yourself, uh, what would you do? Uh, Can't say spend more time with my kids, spend more time with my husband. It's what would you do for you? Like, and it could be anything. Like if you had, you could step out and nothing you did would impact, you're not going to lose time. You're not going to have a week off vacation and miss all this and things are going to collect up and pile up. But if you had no guilt and you had a week to do whatever you wanted to do, what would you do? I love it. That's actually a cool thought experiment too. (laughs) Yeah. So awesome. Trevor, thank you so much for being on. I commend you and, and, you know, kind of keeping an ear to the pavement, figuring out what's going on next, staying in tune with your seniors. I think that you do that tremendously well. Um, Then also just creating amazing work for other photographers to be inspired by because you are, I know you say that you've you've been inspired by other photographers. You're also an inspiration for others. So um, thank you for being on here and, uh, you know, giving us a little insight into, into your brain and how it works. Oh, thank you so much, Sean. That means a lot. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Until next time, we'll see you guys on the next Real Talk.